passion, creativity, fellowship, and friends. The Perfect Mix. Starring Mr. P.C., Chris Pratt, and Alex Wilbur. Brought to you in part by... The Common Chef is about a group of friends who love to cook great food. We travel to your kitchen and cook for you. We never promise to be the best chefs in the world, but we are the most fun. There are hundreds of millions of Common Chefs throughout the world. Mothers, daughters, brothers, uncles, friends, and neighbors. Everyone has a secret recipe, and we love it. We love to make people smile, and we love to make their bellies feel good. In this episode, the Common Chef teams up with Shane's Rib Shack to cook a meal for the great folks at Interfaith. Founder of Shane's Rib Shack, Shane Thompson, built his business on the backbone of old family recipes and work ethic. He personally loves to reach out to the community, and we had a great time working with him. We set up shop in the Brothers Keeper Soup Kitchen, cooked a seven-course gourmet meal that was fit for a king. We chopped chicken breast down and made chicken sausage, and stir-fried it with lots of fixings. Topped it with some roasted corn, and served it in lettuce wraps. Shane joined us in the kitchen to make an incredible pulled pork chili using Shane's very own pork from the restaurant. He called it kitchen sink chili and it was magnificent. I've got five words for you. Ricotta, goat, smoked gruyere, mozzarella, and cheddar cheese melted together with extreme love and topped with bacon. This is getting easy. We started with shaved ribeye, added fresh garlic, jalapeno, ginger, brown sugar, teriyaki, chili paste, and five Asian spice. Marinated it, skewered it, broiled it, and ate the heck out of it. Shazam! Generous amounts of vegetables mixed together with olive oil, balsamic vinegar, soy sauce, and seasonings are then roasted in the oven to perfection. Portobello mushrooms, onions, shrimp, honey, chili garlic, baked in the oven with egg noodles formed what we call double whammy noodles. Shane's Rib Shack brought down some of the best ribs I've ever eaten. Too bad you can't smell that. Then we made a shrimp and veggie stir fry. Shane provided us with some of the smoked chicken for the mix. Yeah, it was as good as it looks. We finished off the night with some sweet crusted peach cobbler from Shane's Rib Shack and topped it with vanilla ice cream. All right here, right now, on The Common Chef. What would we do without the Ocala Farm Market? We love it. I'm getting my morning breakfast before we start filming <laughs> today here at the farm market. Ham and cheese croissant. You know, most people in America, they say croissant, Cro croissant, but no, it's, it's a croissant. The French are weird, and you just gotta deal with it, but that's how it goes. Me and me, we're down like, you know, four flat tires. You know, the prime example of one of the great vendors here down in the Ocala oh. Farm Market, we're gonna be picking up our shrimp for one of the, the noodle dishes that we're gonna be doing. Um, again, we're gonna be cooking for about 40 or so people, so we're gonna probably get about four pounds of the shrimp. This would be Windmill Acres Farm. That's right, we love this place. This place is so good. Not only do they have the best goat cheese around, but some of these marmalades and jellies and things like that we've used a lot in sauteing and glazing. And, and we're putting goat cheese and fresh ricotta cheese in our five-way mac and cheese. Mwah! With, of course, crumbled bacon on top. Do you want to keep it in this bag? Because the great folks at Sunshine AC know how to keep it cool. Oh my gosh, you should be advertising. <laughs> what a coincidence, I just happened to be. <laughs> For over two decades, Sunshine Air Conditioning has been delivering services so good, you'll actually tell your friends about it. They've won the prestigious President's Award from Carrier three years in a row. For all your heating and air needs, visit sunshineac.com. Fresh garlic, nine garlics, is that gonna be enough? Yes. yes. Are you sure? <laughs> Check it out! Chocolate mint, man! And time. We all decided we just need a little time, right? Just a, right. Just just a little time. 
Hey, did you know that most of the germs that enter your body enter through your mouth? You know. And did you know that <laughs> graham crackers and cornflakes were originally invented to help curb constipation? <laughs> Lady, did you, ladybug. <laughs> did you know that tug of war was actually an ancient Chinese sport? Like in the Olympics type of stuff? Well, I don't know if they had Olympics, that was Greece. Yeah, well. <laughs> but, and it has nothing to do with tug of war then. Did you know that in a lifetime you swallow seven spiders while you sleep? Dr. Glue Harif is a staple in Ocala. From a bright white smile to advanced dental procedures, Doc G is the one to call. He is also a huge supporter of Operation Shoebox, which we at The Common Chef love. We had a chance to sit down with Shane Thompson, founder of Shane's Rib Shack. We had to cook a big meal the next day for 40 people, so it took some planning. Shane agreed to cook one of his dishes, a pulled pork chili. We also got a chance to discuss his philosophy about cooking, family, and community. Now let me take you in our kitchen and show you how we do it at Shane. Awesome. Let's do it. Shane took us on a journey to another dimension, a dimension of delicious food around every corner. They smoke their ribs, chicken, and pork all day long. The care they take to prepare their food at Shane's Rib Shack is impressive. All right, we're in here at Shane's Rib Shack in the kitchen. Shane's going to show us some things, how it's done in here. Matter of fact, I think they're going to pull out a bunch of food, and we might even get to sample some. Shane's not just going to show us anything. He's going to show us how to manipulate a pork butt. Someone say pork butt. I'm an innocent bystander. And yes, we left Shane's establishment fat and happy. Would you please go through your process? I, I mean, the meat uh, is so tender and juicy and it's fresh. Even though this is a, even though you're a chain restaurant, the, the food's so fresh. How do you accomplish all this? Well, everything, you know, my granddad really taught me how to cook barbecue. And, and one of the things about barbecue is it, it has to be cooked and it takes a long time to do it. So just like with our ribs, we, our ribs cook for five hours, pork butts, they cook for 10 hours. We mm. use hickory smoke. We use the right amount of smoke. Some places you'll go, it'll be very heavy with smoke. Sometimes you'll go back, it'll be inconsistent. And you know, through my granddad's really background of the barbecue and kind of adding a little bit of, I guess, new technology, we figured out how to make it consistent every time. And really barbecue, I'm trying to let people know it's good for you. It's high in protein and the way that we cook it. It is a good I think one. it's good for you too. <laughs> <laughs> but if you look here, one of the things like with half chickens, they're known to be um, in a lot of restaurants dry. The way we cook them, I'll pop this open. This is one out of the smoker. You oh, see the moisture in that? Look at that. Um, and that's cooked for two and a half hours in your ribs. One of the things about ribs, a lot of people sometimes will overcook them or they boil them or they do all kinds of stuff. We smoke ours and then we'll finish them on a char grill for the customer. And it's a phenomenal product. And you do want a, uh, the rib to fall off the bone, so to speak, but you don't want it to where you, your bone just comes out, it's mushy. A lot of restaurants overcook them. We figure out we've really perfected this. And I get accused a lot of women liking to eat ribs because usually they don't like to get their fingers dirty. Right. But ours, it's kind of an ongoing joke where I'm from, but I like it when women and kids want to eat ribs. That's right. And the faces. You're already a given. Their faces again. and their hands and everything, their jeans, everything's dirty. <laughs> and, then, and then our pork, it, it's cooked for 10 hours. I'm going to show you what we use is a Boston butt. And i got to be very careful here because it'll fall apart. This is cooked for 10 hours. And what we do here is we'll chop it really to order. We'll chop some as the day goes on as we need more. So we don't uh, chop a bunch, cool it down, reheat it, put water in it. And that's so, why it's so fresh every time. That is why it is. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Ooh, well, actually, great. you can take a piece of that yeah. right there. Oh, give me Damn. some of that. Wow. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. Mm, it's hot, too. Mm. Well, that should be good without sauce. Yeah, it is good without sauce. My granddad's recipe on the sauce, this is our original sauce. Mm. You know, the sauce itself has a little bit of palate of flavor. It's got mustard, it's got ketchup, it's got vinegar. So wherever we've gone with it, doesn't matter if it's in South Carolina, people say South Carolina has some barbecue flavors here in Ocala. It does not matter. This thing will hit your palate. Yeah, let me show you, and you're gonna love it. I'm ready. So we'll pull a little bit. We're Sorry gonna... guys. I know, right? <laughs> okay. And that's how you want pork. Pork should be, pork should be, and that's very, very hot, mm -hmm. but it should be tender like that. Um, and as you can see, it's still moist, but a lot of the fat's been cooked out. So it's a, it's a healthy product. But you go ahead and grab that with the sauce on it. Mm -hmm. Pretty dang good. It's hot, huh? it's yummy. 
Yeah. And that, you know what, that takes, for people, that takes years and years to figure out how to cook barbecue. Well, that's what I thought because I've eaten a lot of barbecue and Chris probably ate more than I have, but... Um, I'm a big fan of the barbecue. Yeah. I know it's your brain down my neck. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just waiting until you get to the ribs part. And that's when, uh, that's like, when we'll, we'll tag out. But the yeah. first thing I noticed when I came here to Shane's, the first day, the grand opening, I was eating that whole pork and I was like, man, that is juicy and tender. And I mean, <clears throat> just like that, man. You look at it, the thing is, is that, you know, you never want to take away from people cooking barbecue at their home because. I go to barbecue competitions, and it's a personal thing. People are proud of it. I'm not going to bitch you with this, oh. um, but people are people are proud <laughs> of it. on my fingers. And so we always, I embrace the fact that people cook barbecue different ways. We found a way to cook it that we believe is the best. But you know what? The backyard guy, he it's really hard for him to cook this for ten hours, but he can make a great product. And really, that's how I started as a backyard cook. Well, you're a common chef, right? Common chef. <laughs> I really am. That's, that's, that's scary. What, that's what's so cool. About but anyway, to chop pork, as long as you have it, when a pork is butts cooked the right way. You can take out the bone and the knife should just move right through it. And again, the, the biggest thing about this is what I tell people but with a steak or anything, I could make a mess if I wasn't being filmed right now. I could throw this That's stuff fine with me. Um, is the meat has to be good without sauce. And that goes with a steak. You know, a steak has to be good without the sauce. That's here, here. just a, that's an additive to it, really, or something right. you dip in. So what we want to make sure is that our food is good enough without sauce, and that way if, if you're one that wants to slather it in sauce, you can, or if you just want a little bit, or if you don't want any sauce. Right. And that right there, you see we only chopped it a couple times. That's ready to go on a sandwich that'll look like that. Nice. We liked Shane from the get-go. Not just because he fed us, but because he was down to earth, and you could tell that his heart was in the right place. He cares about his community, and he cooks from the heart. Interfaith Emergency Services has been serving our community since 1983 and the common chef was privileged to be able to cook up a nice dinner for the residents and some of the volunteers. They've been working hard to serve our community for almost three decades. Interfaith survives as a result of area pastors, community leaders, benevolent businesses, organizations, churches, and individuals just like you. Interfaith makes a difference in our community and helps many with programs such as emergency assistance, food, hygiene, and clothing distribution, eyeglasses, and the backpack program, just to name a few. In 2010 alone, Interfaith touched the lives of more than 150,000 people. More than 250 volunteers make up the backbone of this community and service-driven organization. Please visit IESMarion.org to learn more. Interfaith Emergency Services, God's hand extended to those in need. Serving over 19,000 households along both the 200 corridor and South 441 301, SAP Cable Advertising offers some very affordable solutions to get your message out with a targeted effort. Contact the Common Chef for sponsorship and marketing bundles on SAP Cable Advertising. Look at the spread behind us. We have definitely got our work cut out for us, as always, on the Common Chef. We want to thank the Ocala Farm Market for setting us up with all this grub. And we're going to make a gourmet meal that interfaith folks are not going to forget. Not only that, Shane's Rib Shack is coming on down here. And Shane himself, the owner of the franchise, is going to come in and put together his own famous pulled pork chili. Using mm. pulled pork from Shane's Rib Shack. And don't forget about our recipe contest. Go to the website right now, thecommonchef.com. You fill out, you send us your favorite recipe, and you can be in the next episode of Common Chef. We had a ton of prep work for these unique dishes. We had to have a solid plan in place to turn this incredible food from the Ocala Farm Market into a delectable spread. This is Kristen. She is one of the owners of Shane's Rib Shack, and this is her daughter, Mazali. We, but we call her Mazzy for short, right? That's right. That's right. That's okay, right. and she's gonna be, you're gonna be helping us in the kitchen, right? So Shane's here from Shane's Rib Shack, and he is going to rock and roll and put together his own special chili using his own special pulled pork. Pulled pork chili. I can't wait for that, man. Look here, big, 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 big. Yeah, big, big, big. We're gonna go. Where and is all you that, gotta do uh, is turn it around. Turn it around. Up, up. Put that there, hands back. You gotta come up a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, pull that down. This Cajun season. Look, it's there. Have you ever tried this? 
Restaurant Training 101. With over 1.4 million page views a month, Ocala for Sale has all the online traffic you'll need to buy or sell your goods or services. From real estate to a new boat grill, you've got it all at your fingertips. So this will be the first episode of The Common Chef where we actually, it'll be alcohol free. I'm going through withdrawals right now. I know. Woo! It's alive! <laughs> alive! That's right. Crazy soul. Uh, chili is... I don't know if I could really mess up the chili. Well, that's why we gave it to you because believe it or not, we could mess up chili. <laughs> yeah, our dishes are... Actually, you know what's funny about editing? Is our dishes are generally horrible. But the thing is... <laughs> I love it. That's, what, that's what's great about editing. Everything we do really is bad. We edit it delicious. Yes. A little chili powder. A little of that crazy salt. Crazy what I did, salt! What I did was boil it all together so it'll mix real well. What are we making? Uh, what I say? Chili. Yes. Tell me when to stop. Stop. Okay. Well, what I've done is I've trimmed off a lot of the fat of this chicken and I'm mincing this chicken to get ready for the appetizer. We're going to make a chicken sausage stir fry. Mincing uh, the chicken real fine is going to cause it to kind of almost, you know, cook down, hamburger up. I've taken a uh, good amount of um, onions, a nice big yellow onion. Chop that up real fine. Throw it in there with about a whole half a clove of garlic, finely minced by uh, Chris Brack's excellent mincing technique. Thrown in um, a good amount of black pepper, um, a little bit of curry, not a lot, but just a little bit, bring out a little sweetness in there. And um, also some uh, rosemary garlic seasoning, the rosemary in, and just a little bit of Everglades salt seasoning as well. I'm gonna look and throw in a did little bit. Did you put any crazy salt in? No, I did not put any in because. I've got it! And there you go. <laughs> and, and for Shane, for Shane, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna put in some crazy salt! <laughs> Man, I got all. I know. Wait, I got it all in my mouth. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now what I'm doing right here is I am taking all the kernel off of this corn. We're gonna roast this corn, and it's gonna be a side item that people are gonna be able to put on their lettuce wraps. So earlier, what uh, our good friend Chris had done, what well, he see what would happen was uh, Chris went, Chris went and uh, had his buddy shave these down, who has a, a, a meat shaver. And so we're, we've got these thin pieces of ribeye. This is a, was a big, thick, beautiful piece of ribeye. Now they're thinly shaved, beautiful pieces of ribeye that will go into an incredibly beautiful teriyaki ginger garlic glaze, five Asian spice, and some other secret ingredients that I can't tell you about. You have to wait till we open the restaurant. I'm finishing off my beef stick concoction. Jalapenos, garlic, fresh ginger, some seasonings, brown sugar, teriyaki sauce. Let it marinate for an hour and a half or so, and then we're gonna skewer it and broil it. It's all ribeye too. For over two decades, Sunshine Air Conditioning has been delivering services so good, you'll actually tell your friends about it. They've won the prestigious President's Award from Carrier three years in a row. For all your heating and air needs, visit sunshineac.com. We're good. We're good like it is. I think it's a crazy salt. Crazy, crazy salt! <laughs> it's got a little, uh, it hits the palate in the front of the tongue. Oh, I like it. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, we That's like an atomizer. Yeah, yeah that thing, uh... That's a nuclear power. I think things are getting sucked in from the top shelf. <laughs> this is weird. We don't have things like this in a barbecue shed. <laughs> but I like it. I was just adding in. You didn't even see my mouth. You know. 
<laughs> Hold on, I think this has got to be one of the coolest things I've ever seen right here. <laughs> nice. Common chef style! Hey, look. Whenever you get the chef up, that's fine. They can joke, but us vertically challenged people are the same. Take a moment. Wait, let me start from the beginning. Yeah, muscle memory. Out with the bad, in with the good. Okay. Um, yeah, so the first concoction's done. Now I'm heading on to the double whammy noodles. The base includes clam juice, honey, soy sauce, fresh garlic, onion, portobello, mushrooms, shrimp, and a healthy dose of sriracha, along with some chunks of bacon. Bake the base for an hour to let everything melt. Then add egg noodles and bake for another hour. I think hour. it needs a little bit of more of a low end taste. Maybe some, uh, where did that come from? You know, some low end taste. Not that high, man. You notice he gets, like, more intelligent as he's cooking. <laughs> That's never, ever, ever, ever been said about me before in any way, shape, or form. Unbelievable. The Ocala Farm Market. Well, I was going to say, that's farmer's market. And it's all local grown? But yes, sir. It's amazing. I cannot wait for this to be done right here. We've got the beginnings of our roasted vegetables. There's onions, peppers, all kinds of different kinds of peppers. We've got red peppers, we got yellow peppers, green peppers, sweet peppers. In here, we've got squash, we've got zucchini, and right now, going to be the best stage that we're going to come across because uh, we're getting ready to add in some red skin potatoes. After everything is prepped, add some olive oil, some balsamic vinaigrette, soy sauce, and believe it or not, crazy salt. Mix them and roast them in the oven for about 45 minutes at 350 degrees. Much. Well, the recipe like calls for a quarter of a cup. The shades most pork going in the chili. <laughs> you always gotta stir to the right. Stir to the right. Stir to the right. Why do you stir to the right? Wow, that was sounded good. Okay, we're about ready to start. Round two here in the common chef in the kitchen here at Interfaith. We've got a lot of stuff prepped. We've got a little bit more prep work to do, but now it's time to get down to some serious business and start cooking this stuff up fast. But so, so we got some more help. Uh, we introduced Brad. Brad is uh, one of the owners here at the Shane's uh, Rib Shack here in Ocala. And then we've got Jake and Carson, his children, that have come down to help us throw down. You guys ready? Everybody in. Come on. One, two, three, go team. I am making the macaroni and cheese. Nice. Right now we have our noodles and some butter. Yeah. Adding in some ricotta, some goat cheese. Hey, that be a bad day for a little That's what I was thinking. Josh, you might want to look at this. I mean, you can look. Look at that yeah. cheese. Oh my gosh. The mac and cheese was so thick it took two of us to paddle it into the baking pan. We topped it with shredded cheese and bacon. All right, we're getting ready to pull out the five-way macaroni and cheese. We baked it for a half hour at 350 degrees. As you can see, quick stir fry through a little soy sauce in. Got a nice brown going on. Everything's tendered up. We don't really hear any more sizzle. So it's time to take the batch off. The lettuce wraps were a huge hit, and the roasted corn was a nice addition. The five Asian teriyaki ribeye shavings were tedious to skewer but we knew that the end result would be well worth it. Make sure to broil the meat with the marinade sauce for that extra jolt of flavor. Shazam! The double whammy noodles will soak up the base. The bacon and the shrimp will provide little treasure pockets of flavor that make your taste buds spasm in gastronomic delight. We used sugar, soy, vinegar, and fish sauce for the stir-fry base. Dusted it lightly with a few of our favorite seasonings and then cooked the shrimp to perfection. Shane's smoked chicken added another layer of unique and delicious flavor. Shane's Rib Shack provided us with a whole pan of smoked and charred grilled ribs. Everyone in the building clamored for these ribs, even us common chefs. Shane's Rib Shack also brought down some of their unbelievably good peach cobbler. 
It is the best cobbler we've ever had. Then we top that golden warm sweet dish with vanilla ice cream. <laughs> Even local food writer Rick Allen stopped by to check in. No, man, they got a bag of cheese. That's good. 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 Contest, log on to thecommonchef.com, submit your best recipe, and you can be on the next episode of The Common Chef.